Good day, Green Thumbs. My name is Brandon, owner of Easy Swap Hots, and today I'm here to give you the scoop on the most abundant and overlooked fertilizer in the world today. Now I'll give you a hint, the most abundant fertilizer doesn't fall in the category of being a plant or an animal. So what is it? Now I'll give you one quick guess what that overabundant fertilizer is. Now if you said pond scum, algae, cyanobacteria, plankton, phytoplankton, or biofertilizer, you would be correct. So in my quest to be more self-sustaining and using all the resources that this piece of property truly can give us, I have looked into multiple ways to fertilize. And yes, we've been using chicken manure, but that is only one part of the equation. Now for years, I've been staring at this pond and wondering how can I harvest all the lily pads to be used as fertilizer in my garden. And I've spent numerous hours in this kayak pulling lily pad by lily pad trying to make it happen until this year it dawned on me, why don't I just go and collect the pond scum? You can clearly see it's abundant, and so I did. It's no secret that lakes, rivers, and ponds are the most nutrient-dense ecosystems in the world. It is also no secret in the gardening community that kelp helps promote plant health and provides lots of potassium and micronutrients. So after doing my research on pond scum, we come to find out that it's extremely high in nitrogen and potassium, and it gets its nitrogen from the atmosphere. It's actually able to pull nitrogen from the air and store it in its material. And it also is able to pull the nutrients that are in your pond, river, and streams. This goes not only with just algae, but also pond weeds or aquatic plants. And they're actually able, they're using the, the nutrients actually out of the pond and stuff. And so if we harvest that and put that onto our soil, it is only gonna provide those same exact nutrients after it breaks down for our garden. So the other benefit that it does is it actually helps build soil structure and create more air in your soil. And it is actually able to hold more water after it breaks down. So I'll show you how we go about collecting it. Right now, the easiest way I found to collect it is to grab my kayak and a pitchfork. Now there are some downfalls to this fertilizer. One being that it's extremely heavy due to the water weight. Two is that it's not very easy to collect. There's no easy way about going to collect a whole pond full. But some of the benefits are that this stuff can multiply in one or two days. This is actually already our second harvest off the ponds and I expect to get a third one yet as long as I can get this one off the pond. So it's very quick to reproduce. We've already stated it's high in potassium, high in nitrogen. It's full of pond weeds, algae. I've even seen leeches, minnows, other water bugs. That's all providing nutrients and proteins for your soil, which is just gonna boost the health of the soil overall in the long run. So you might ask, is there any proof? Well, you can do your own research on that and we can actually head up to the garden so I can show you exactly what it looks like when you use it as a top dress. Here we are in the garden. These three potatoes have nothing but pond scum on them. I got three rows here and I'll show you more in detail. 
So these three rows have pond scum only on them. I've got several other plants. This whole end where we had garlic, I just covered with the pond scum. And here we'll see. So you can see this has been on here for about a week. The top part is real crispy and dry. Breaks up real fine. And then you can see this under layer is still green. Almost kind of slimy. And you can see it's still holding a ton of moisture and a ton of moisture still down in the soil. So it's good. We're gonna use it because we have an abundance of it. We are gonna use it like a mulch and just let it break down naturally, which is gonna suppress weeds, help hold moisture down while all providing nutrients and adding to the soil health once it's all said and done. But here you can see this pond scum has been on here for about a month. It hasn't actually broken down, but it's pretty crumbly. And still got a lot of nutrients to add to the soil. And right here would be our oldest. This is probably six weeks. You can almost barely tell what it is. It looks like soil. And that is about six weeks of sitting on top of the soil acting as a mulch. And you can see it's pretty much soil already. There ain't a whole lot left. Here's, here's some more. So there it is in use. I do plan to try to uh, find a better way to harvest. I might even actually stick a boat in there to make harvesting a lot easier and faster. It takes me about 20 minutes to get a wheelbarrow's worth which is quite a bit of time, and at the same time, food is worth it. So, And so is soil health, something we all have to take a, a little bit more interest in. And I'll show you one more row of potatoes. Other than getting some comfrey mulch, these potatoes have gotten comfrey mulch, and then this was also just applied earlier in the week. Oh, a worm. So you can see there's plenty of moisture still on the surface. You can see there's a lot of green material there, a lot of pond weeds. Most of the algae looks like it's broken down already. I'll leave that there. And I can't wait to do some harvesting to see how it all did this year. All right, so I showed you how to use it. I showed you how to collect it. I'm sure many of you are thinking, Brandon, I don't have a pond, nor do I have a lake. How in the world am I supposed to use this? Well, lucky for you, there's plenty of people that have ponds or live on lakes and rivers that honestly like to clean up their shorelines and they probably just throw it away. And I actually did look up on the Wisconsin DNR. If you got permission or per, a permit from the DNR, you can go ahead and collect this from the wild. Otherwise, the only way to get around that is to know someone that has property on the water and then you are legally allowed to clear and take it again, this is just in Wisconsin, you're allowed to clear 30 feet of shoreline if you are the property owner. So get in touch with someone that has a beachfront resort, ask them if you can clean up their pond muck. If you don't have the abundance of aquatic algae and aquatic plants, I would suggest instead of using it as a mulch on your garden, to make a tea out of it or a slurry and use that to thin it out and make it spread further or go a long way. I thank you all so much for uh, watching. I hope you learned something, and until next time, peace.